My parents weren't the best parents. They were heavily involved in drinking and drugs and would take me out on drug deals with them as an infant. When my parents would get high, they would have all of their drug friends with them and they would sexually abuse me. And it was almost as if it was a form of entertainment for them. My grandparents caught on relatively quickly and went through this very long custody battle with the courts to basically gain custody of me. Um, and after, after that had taken place, I was about three years old. So I, I dealt with this you know, infancy of about three and um, went through counseling and that took place a majority of my, my childhood. Um, I, I went through life having to see my father every other weekend and that was really hard for me because I just, I don't remember much about what had happened, but I didn't like him. I don't remember being molested, but as an adult going back and reading through these court documents and the psychiatrist notes, it, it makes me angry. It, you know, no child deserves that and I, I experienced a lot of frustration and disgust and sadness. I, I was pretty upset about it for a while. So I just, I hated going. I dreaded these weekends spending time with him. His parents would make me write letters to him. He was in and out of prison a lot. And so I would have to write letters to him. And I just dreaded those weekends. I dreaded seeing them. I dreaded talking to my father. I just hated it. Eventually, him being in and out of prison, the relationship that we did have kind of dwindled because I, I didn't see him. And I went throughout my life just pushing that issue to the side. And inside I was very bitter and upset and angry. Why did this have to happen to me? You know, I just want a normal life. I want normal parents. Um, and as I, I went into my older teenage years of high school, I got up to my junior year, I was 17, and my mother died very suddenly and he showed up at the funeral unannounced. I was really upset about it and afterwards there were some words exchanged basically to the extent of, I'm not your daughter, I don't want you in my life, please just leave me alone. And we didn't speak for about five years. So Sam and I are trying to figure out our, our wedding guest list and I just have this urge or this tug at my heart, call your dad. I didn't want to follow that urge to call. I, I was still harboring a lot of hatred and bitterness towards him and was really not interested in pursuing that relationship. As time progressed, I, I went on and that tug got stronger and stronger and eventually I just called him up and um, wasn't really sure what I was doing, wasn't sure how that conversation was gonna go, um, but I just broke down on the phone and I don't know what got into me, but I just, teared up and was like, I'm so sorry for being horrible to you. It all kind of worked out. He apologized to me, I apologized to him. And then a couple months later, he was dancing with me at my wedding. And <laughs> to be able to go from, I hate this person, to just accepting them. God held that phone call in his hands and unbeknownst to me, he just restored a relationship that I didn't have any willpower to restore. I had no desire whatsoever to fix that. Not only did he restore that relationship with my father, but he restored my heart because I harbored so much anger and bitterness towards him and my mother that being able to mend that relationship, you know, mended my heart as well, I think. And, and that's really nice to be able to, to say that.